Come take a look at a Tyranid blast from the past. Spiky bits. <laughs> What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear with you again today, checking out the old second edition Tyranid Codex book. Now, I brought this one out of the archives back when Gene Stealer Cult was a thing, about this time last year, actually. And we went over the gene, some of the Gene Stealer Cult stuff into here that was a little bit more in depth. But today, I wanted to bust it out with new Tyranids on the horizon. Get it, get it, get it. <laughs> uh, that we could take a look at kind of where they came from. So, this is the second edition Tyranid Codex book. This was right around the time that a lot of armies started becoming armies, or a lot of factions started becoming armies. There was already models out for the Tyranids, but this was the, the first time they become kind of like a cohesive force. Now there was some rules for running Gene Stealer cults and such in the, I wanna say it was either Rogue Trader or a previous White Dwarf that had come out earlier to this. This book is from 1995, it's about 88 pages. Uh, it does have some advertisements and such. Here's the, uh, inset cover here. So it was written by Andy Chambers, uh, the man, the myth, the legend there with illustrations by Dave Gallagher, John Blanche, Wayne England, the late Wayne England, Mark Gibbons, and Des Hanley. I don't know who Des is, but I've heard of the rest of them for sure with stories by Jonathan Green. Now, Mark Gibbons, I think, went on to work. I think he illustrates for Blizzard now currently, and he's probably the artist that drew a lot of stuff uh, that you might remember most or have seen from second edition Warhammer 40K. And of course, John, John Blanche needs no introduction. He is an iconic figure that helped shape the Grimdark itself for Games Workshop there. Here on the inset or the leaflet cover, I guess they call it, you can see some of the custom terrain they used to have to build back then. This was right around the time they started getting some plastic models. The Tyranids were kind of hamstrung by the fact that they didn't have that many units, as far as plastic goes, they only had the Gene Stealers and the old school Tyranid Warriors right there. Uh, the rest of the stuff was pewter figures. So if you wanted, to, you know, a whole bunch of Termagants or Hormagants that you had to shell out the eight bucks, I think, for two figures uh, to get them in a blister pack, and that added up pretty quick back in the day. Believe me, uh, even the gargoyles were uh, very similar. I think you only got one of them for about ten bucks, and then you had the Lictors, the special character Lictors. Uh, the Carnifex, the old Screamer Killer, we've talked about him numerous times in the past here on the channel. And the Hive Tyrant, the old Hive Tyrant there, that was the first edition of the Hive Tyrant Mini. I think a lot of people have a soft spot for the second edition one, which looked very similar to the Alien Queen from Aliens, or actually from either of the movies, I suppose. Contents-wise, so rules weren't as big, well, I guess, they're, I guess they're about the same as they are these days. So rules were pretty much... Um, the army list itself was from page 65 to 79 and from 64 earlier which is the majority of the book it was all fluff and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, special rules right here which was only about two pages and then it got into your strategy levels and your mission selection and all that stuff but before that it was a lot of fluff talking about the uh, two main high fleets that were around back then or in the fluff of course they've evolved a few more since then but this was the you know start of all that fluff and of course they've retconned a lot of it like for instance the assault on Tyran has been kind of retconned that the admech was there they shot the codex into space explaining what the tyranids were in this they about shot it into the planet's core like a bore hole into the core and it was kind of there and that's where they recovered it from so a few little bit of uh, fluffy kind of retcons which you're gonna see throughout a lot of the second edition stuff in uh, to third into fourth into fifth and so on and so forth and now we have uh, what we have today of course so it's going through a lot of the bestiary section here which included the stat lines the special rules themselves anything in there that was pertinent to the model uh, there was a a lot more complexity to the game back then second edition um, saves were determined by war gear so in a lot of cases you're not going to see a save on here it's just your your straight values and such and of course a lot of this may or may not look familiar to you anymore because now in uh, eighth edition 40k pretty much from second edition to seventh edition we had these similar kind of stat lines where you subtracted you know the weapon skill and such or the ballistic skill and now it's just a straight hits on twos hits on threes etc 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 
But for some of you veterans out there, you're gonna, um, you know, kind of recognize a lot of a lot of this stuff here. So that's the character section. And then it gets into the Gene Stiller Cult Forces, which is like a mini section in here. Now, like I said, these guys were kind of hamstrung because they didn't have a lot of models, and the models they had were a little expensive. Because, like, you know, if you wanted to take troops, it was two bucks for, or excuse me, eight dollars for two models. So that that added up pretty quick. But what they could do is they could loot, and they could they could kind of uh, envelope in the Gene Stealer cult kind of stuff, and they had access to just about anything. Here's a better look at some of the miniatures that came out back then. I remember the Hive Tyrants and the Carnifexes were about $50. Now, that's a 40 mil square, square base. Like, these are not 50 mils. These are not big miniatures by today's standards, but back then, these the Screamer Killer was actually the biggest model there was. Uh, it stood taller head to toe than the Bloodthirster, I, I believe, uh, if I recall correctly. So, for a time, this was the biggest miniature in Warhammer 40K. Now, of course, um, well, even, even the plastic one's pretty big, but <laughs> you didn't see nothing like that back then. Oh no, the squat homeworlds got eaten. <laughs> and then it gets into a section here of painted miniatures, all the heavy metal team, and all that custom terrain and things. And then mission cards, event tables, etc., etc. Some dope full color art right there. And then of course, this was the Exocrine and the Malfactor. These were rather large resin kits put out by armor cast back then a living artillery and a troop transport which we saw the horse specs malefactor uh kit kind of come out it was kind of like a dual kit now a plastic kit i believe but back then it was a lot larger and did a lot of different things you could spit out gene stealers from it for instance now uh these actually are up in a flashback video here on the channel as well we had those back in the day and we Unbox them for your convenience. So check that one out too. Now it gets into a whole bunch of special rules uh, Tiered and biomorphs that you could take on everybody and you could customize a lot of different things Here's a awesome piece of Mark Gibbons artwork right there for that genie stealer or that uh, hive tyrant And then it goes through all of your forces your war gear list now Remember you had to take specific amounts of specific things like right here in the army selection And this is for the gene stealer cult, but there's also one for tyranids they would give you the specific breakdown, like for your Tyranid Swarm, individuals or characters, 50%, broods, 25%, and support, up to half the points value of the Swarm can be chosen from the support section of the Swarm list. Now this wasn't necessarily the Troop, or the Elite, or the HQ that we saw back in the day. They all had specific kind of names and just kind of worked together, like support and broods and things like that. But you know, you could adapt them over to HQ and uh, Elite or Heavy and you know, stuff like that if you really wanted to but back then it was a little bit more you know uh, leisurely uh, when, it, when it came to it but once they started getting more and more models out and then of course in the back of the book was the catalog of pewter components and this is where you could actually mail order these parts if you wanted to make your own customization these were the SKU numbers right here and then it gave you the exploded view of how it all went together which is actually this is kind of cool to see considering the time you know 1995 we didn't really have uh, you know desktop publishing was kind of a fledgling thing so there really wasn't the internet per se there was still like some mail order but to have this sort of information at your fingertips was actually a boon because you couldn't just pull out your cell phone and be like oh let me look up you know the price of termagants with spike rifles or something like that it just did, didn't exist back then but here we are today looking back and like why do they have that in here I don't understand <laughs> well everything has a reason it's only crazy if it doesn't work. And then there's the selection of the plastic kits. And then it goes into more in-depth, you know, uh, the expansion for Warhammer 40K 2nd Edition, the starter box, some of the codexes that had come out to date. Now, some of the codexes didn't come out until like 1997. I think the Tyranid, or excuse me, the Sisters book didn't come out until 1997. So it took them about three or four years to get everything out, starting in, I want to say, 93 on into the fall of 93 on into 97. And then they replaced, I think Sisters came out and then they kicked off the new third edition, I wanna say in 1998, summer of 98. I might be off a year or two right there, but that's the way I'm remembering it. And then that's it. Awesome section in the back of a pretty cool battle between the Imperial Guard, some Attilan Rough Riders, which and they don't really talk about quite as much anymore, some Ogrens, some Talrons, and a Chimera. 
the brand new Chimera plastic kit had just come out right around that time as well. Hmm. I remember it like it was yesterday. Well, there they are. And some Katachan Jungle Fighter guys uh, all on pewter. Those guys were really cool. Replaced in plastic in 1999, if I recall correctly. So, n nice little blast from the 40K Pass there. Second edition, Tyranid book. I want to say this was $25 US. Uh, you can tell it's in very good condition because I did not play Tyranids. <laughs> but I did get the book. And well, it's just it's just lasted all these years. What can I say? Really need to bust these out from time to time and talk about them a lot. Now there are rules in here that we haven't seen uh, for many many years. We just saw the Tyranid with spike rifle or the Termagant with spike rifle come back after all those years. Last edition or last Tyranid uh, codex. So that was really cool to see as an option. Haven't seen that around. That's a model. These actually predated this book. These were out in 1998. Or 1988, if I recall correctly. Gene Steelers as well came out well before this book did in plastic. A lot of these models were created right around the same time as this book coming out because it didn't make any sense to have them when they didn't have like a cohesive army list kind of type deal. But there it is. I hope you enjoyed our 40K retro video of the old second edition Tyranny Codex. For more features like this, we have a rather large flashback section here on the channel. Make sure you subscribe to this channel as well as turning notifications on so you can be the very first to like and comment on our post and head on over to thelongwar.net. That is the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, VIP access, and more. Become a veteran of the Long War today.